Welcome to our first little quick start tutorial that's just going to go through uh, just opening up a QLab file, a couple of little bits of setup just to get you playing around in QLab as quickly as possible. So what we're going to do, I've got a few things set up here in the background just to speed us up when we get a bit further down the line. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up QLab 5 here. Um, I will be doing a version of this tutorial for QLab 4. I probably won't do for QLab 3 because I think everyone will be on 4 or 5 now. Um, but we'll start off with QLab 5 as that's the most common one that people will be downloading at the minute. So we're going to open QLab 5 and we are immediately going to get a pop-up window here um, which is going to enable us to start things and we're just going to hit new workspace. And here we have our brand new workspace window that we're going to start working in. Now, before we just start working away, we're just going to check a couple of things here. Um, we're going to go through how I prefer to have all this set up um, for operation in a future one. But this is, as I say, just a very, very quick start one. So we're going to just check that all four of these are ticked here. And then we're going to check in audio here that, system, that we are set to system output here. OK. Um, You'll notice on the drop down here, we've got Tom's AirPods Pro here that I could connect to those, but I want system output Tom's AirPods Pro. OK, um, it may your system output may say something else, but just make sure that it says system output. As soon as we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to file. Save. Um, and we are going to type in quick start one and enter you'll notice here that a folder is created quick start one and we are all ready to go um, so that is just getting you going straight off the bat nice and quickly okay now what we're going to do is we're going to go back over everything that we've just done but with a little bit more explanation about what we're doing so i'm going to get rid of that i'm going to get rid of that and i am just going to go back to here so we've opened QLab, we're going to start with our first thing. This would probably list your most recent Q, um, workspaces. Um, so if you were reopening something, you would see down here a list of your most recent workspaces. But it may be that that's not listed there. So you could click Workspace and File. You'll be given a Finder window and then you could go to wherever you're wanting to go to to open um, an old file from there, maybe an archive file. Um, these ones down here connect to a workspace. Um, that means that multiple people can, can be working on one workspace at any one time over a local network. If you're all connected to the same wireless network or wired network, um, I wouldn't worry about that at all. We'll not really be going into that in these tutorials because these are based at a lot more basic level than that. And licenses, again, we'll cover in one tutorial, but that was if you would um, be to rent or to buy a license for the day. This is where that would show up um, and you can manage your licenses here. Again, I'll do a little tutorial on that later, but I'm hoping to do most of these tutorials on the free version of QLab. So we're just going to start a new workspace. It does what it says on the tin and then we've come into here. The second thing that we then did is we went into here. Um, now, as you can see, there are all sorts of things down here that we can set up in advance. Um, uh, but the ones that for our quick start is we were just checking that these four things are selected here. So what these are doing is copy files into the project folder when adding to workspace. This just means that if you've got files that are stored in multiple places, so say maybe you might have two memory sticks plugged in, um, say from students or from somebody else who's brought you a sound file um, that you've plugged them in, it just means that when you drag from the file from there into QLab, QLab will also make a copy of it on your laptop or on your Mac, sorry, and it'll put it and keep it nicely organized into one little folder for you. This is a very important thing and a great thing that QLab 5's done, and I strongly recommend that you do this at all times. Um, automatically make backup copies of this workspace. Again, it's fairly self-explanatory, but what it's going to do is every now and again, it's going to automatically do a save. Even if you don't do a save, it will automatically do a little save. But it's not going to save over what you've done. It's going to make a duplicate of your file with a date and a timestamp. And that just means that if you do something irrevocable and you can't undo it and get back to where you were, 
um, you can go into your backups and open the backup from say 10 minutes ago or 20 minutes ago or 30 minutes or an hour ago or etc etc and you can change how often that happens in the preferences tab so up here qlab qlab preferences which is different to your settings tab and you can see here collaboration name which is uh, we'll look after auto save after 30 seconds uh, auto save is enabled per uh, workspace and there's a few other things that we can do in there um, but basically we've got this auto auto save going on um, after 30 seconds uh, so yeah that's where our preferences are so again that was in QLab QLab preferences um, make a backup copy of this workspace before saving it just means that if we do a manual save so if we're about to do something uh, that we are worried that might be a little bit irrevocable we can just do a quick save QLab will make a backup copy and then start working again so you can always go back to that save point um, because you've got a backup copy made and then rotate backups. What rotate backups does is it's going to delete the older backups. It's going to keep your 20 most recent and then it's going to delete everything from further back than that. Um, or, well, it'll delete and keep sort of a limited number. So you'll end up with one backup per day for the older stuff, one backup per hour for the last day, and then lots of backups for the last hour. If you want to take the, that off, then it'll just keep every single backup. But you may obviously find that you're building up an awful lot of backups um, and that may well take up uh, a lot of hard drive space. So just take these out here. All right. Uh, sorry, click rotate backups here so that that just keeps those in a bit of order. Uh, and we are here. Um, what we then did is we then went into file and save. So what we're going to do here is just give ourselves a name and I'm going to go onto the desktop again and we did quick start one and we're going to save that onto the desktop and you'll note here that we just went with a default which has this in here save workspace so that's the little QLab file and media to a new project folder. I shall show you what that's going to do in a second but there are a couple of drop downs here you can do save workspace file only which will just save QLab. Now what QLab is, is it's a list of instructions that tells your Mac to do things. So it tells your Mac to play a song. The song isn't actually, or the sound effect isn't in QLab itself. The song exists outside QLab. QLab is, is the workspace is just a list of instructions. So you need to make sure that that is being copied, that the files are being copied into somewhere. Um, we'll cover that in a little bit more detail um, in a later um, tutorial on its own and we will cover it sort of briefly as we as we start adding things in you'll see things happening um, and then we can do customize settings which just enables us a few more options down here um, as you go but for this we're just doing this save workspace and media to new project folder we then hit save and we got this project folder here so if we open this project folder, what you'll see here, this is the QLab workspace. So this is the save of this over here. That's what that is. Then we've got QLab Quick Start 1 backups. So these are where all the different versions of this workspace are saved as backups. All right. Now, if we drag ourselves an audio queue into here, you'll see that it's automatically created a folder that says audio and it's put a copy of that in there. It's not moved it. This is still existing on my desktop here. It's made a copy of it into here. Okay. So that means that inside this folder here is everything that QLab needs to operate. Okay. Because it has the workspace file. It has the audio. If we were doing other things, it would create, say, maybe a folder for media or for effects or all sorts of things like that. It would move what it needs to do into this folder here. Um, okay. So that's what we did there. I'm just going to jump back because we, we skipped a step that we did before, um, but I was just sort of following one route down. And that's just to go into audio. So in audio, we checked that this had system output Tom's AirPods Pro in them. Okay. So we can see we've got a multiple list of drop downs here. These are some software things that I've got on my on my Mac. Um, these are my MacBook Pro speakers, my sound card that I've got plugged in, 
and my AirPods Pro. Now, you may think that it's a bit odd that we've got systems output, Tom's AirPods Pro, and we've got AirPods Pro here. And they're listed as two independent things, even though they both exist. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you by default what happens here. So we've got systems output, Tom's AirPods Pro. I'm now going to take off my AirPods, put them back in my case just to turn them off. And just like normally with your Mac, if you take your AirPods off, your Mac will just switch over to using the speakers, um, as will happen if you put your AirPods back in. So if I put my AirPods back in, this is switched over to um, Tom's AirPods Pro. If I select this one down here, so Tom's AirPods Pro, it's not system settings. It's not system output that I've got selected. Tom's AirPods Pro, that's telling it. I don't care what the system wants to do. I don't care what my Mac wants to do. You are going to send the audio out of Tom's AirPods. And that's what QLab has been told to do in patch one. Now I've just taken my AirPods out. It's immediately come up with disconnected here. Okay, so this is a bit problematic because the AirPods aren't there. It's listed them down here. They're no longer listing here because this is what's available. It's listing them here as something that it knows that it wants to find, but they're not there. And this is a very common problem of getting issues. So you'll see here that this has got a cross next to it. If I hover over it, and because of my big arrow to help people see things, you can't read what it's saying, but there says there's a problem with the audio output patch. Select a valid audio output patch in the input output tab of the inspector or select the fixed the affected patch in here so we can go into here and I could then manually force it out of the MacBook Pro speakers which would mean that even when I reconnect my AirPods it's still going to go out the MacBook Pro speakers okay so if I go back to done I've got my track there I'm reconnecting my earpods and again you can see that they've popped up there but this and we'll go through these places in a bit more. It's still coming out of my MacBook Pro speakers, okay? My settings are still on my MacBook Pro speakers, even though my AirPods are connected, because QLab's forcing itself to do it. Now, when you're just messing around, it's much simpler if you stick to system output here, and then whatever your default sound on your Mac is coming out of, that is what QLab is going to play out of. And that's what that was. Again, these will all be broken down further and in a little bit more detail and why you may want to do these things in a future tutorial. But that's just a basic of what we're doing there is system output. Um, and that just means if you're getting sound out of your Mac in the normal circumstances, you should be getting sound out of your Mac from QLab. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, and I shall be back with you with another short tutorial soon. Thank you very much.